Hi, I'm Stefan Kesting from grapplers.com, and what you're going to get in just a second is an incredibly detailed and I think super useful breakdown of a very powerful guard pass, the counters to that guard pass, the counters to the counters for that guard pass, and then the counters to the counters to the counters. And it's this sort of decision making, this, this counter and recounter game that high level guys, jiu jitsu, black belts, world champions are doing all the time when they're sparring. They're making these adjustments and using these counter techniques so fast that sometimes you can't even see them, but they are there. And what we're hoping to do by breaking this down for you today is to start giving you the ability to start adding these adjustments and these counters into your own game. A little bit of background. What you're going to see is taken from the Spider Guard Masterclass instructional set that I did together with Elliot Bayev. This is available as a five DVD set or as a series of five different instructional apps for iPhone, iPad, Android, and Kindle devices. Specifically, this is from volume five, which is all about shutting down your opponent's guard passes. Now, nominally it's called Invincible Spider Guard, which would suggest it's only for Spider Guard, but really, this is about any open guard position, which includes things like butterfly guard, de la Hiva guard, standard open guard, or even when you think about it, close guard, because if you've got me in your close guard and I manage to break open your close guard, <laughs> you're now in the open guard, and I'm going to start using open guard passes to pass your close guard. So you can start using these same counters and these same counter for counter for counter methodologies in your own game, regardless of what kind of guard you use. So without any further ado, I give you my friend Elliot Bayev and a little portion of Spider Guard Masterclass on black belt level guard passing and guard pass counters. All right, now we're gonna wrap up our Spider Guard series by looking at how we shut down the leg shark pass, which is a, a very tough situation to deal with and it's something that's very popular and common and it happens very quickly. And one of the issues with this pass is that it happens when we've lost our grips and they have a grip on our pants. We might have a grip on their sleeve, but they have, we, there's only that one grip and we don't have a lot of control. So it looks like this. Say Stefan was in the spider guard and I broke his grip. Now, Better than I grab on the outside, but I'm going to circle around to this side and I'm going to drive my hips in here. From here, I'm going to be able to pass Stefan's guard and it's a very disabling, uncomfortable position. So say Stefan breaks a grip on one side here and now he goes for the leg shot. As he goes, if I don't do anything, if I stay on my back, it's now very tough to defend. So as he does the shuck, I'm going to use his energy to sit up. So we've seen this from a few different situations. But we've seen this in a few of our other pass prevention ideas. This is our first line of defense. Here. From here, we're going to shrimp away. And again, it's that top knee coming through. And then ideally looping on top. We know this is a safe position. And we can start getting back to our spider guard. So one more time, we lost a grip on this side and he starts shucking. We sit up right away and we sip on that. Shrimp in, loop over or under and get a foot back on their bicep. And now of course, start looking to get your grips again, start getting your spider guard. Now the issue with this, and we'll take a look at how does someone shut this down, but the issue is that there are actual specific counters to this. So when talking to my friend John Thomas about this, one thing he helped me out with was the idea that we don't want to rely exclusively on this push. It works very well. And if you're a blue, purple, brown, any level belt, if your partner doesn't know how to shut it down, this is going to work great. But as they learn the counters, <clears throat> if you rely too exclusively on it, you're gonna get shut down. So we wanna go back to some of our basic ideas. What did we say when they were both fighting us? That as they both fight, if we don't catch the timing, we put hands on the shin and we come here. Now, one other tool that I got from Osaf, whose, whose name you probably know well by now, as they're trying to turn us this way, here, look how my hips are pointed this way. I don't really have a base to stop that, or do I? 
as they're trying to push this way, Notice, if I push my elbow into the ground, I can actually get fairly strong. So we're gonna use that kind of hidden elbow base to assist us just to stay stable, and we're gonna use a shin check here. If they go to the other side here, instead of relying on that sleeve, we elbow, push, shin check, and recenter. So this is a good drill. Your partner gets to practice their shuck, and you get to practice your shin check, and elbow push here. Now I say that you don't want to rely exclusively on that sleeve push, why? Because if I go for the shuck and Stefan sleeve pushes, he sits up and he comes here. As he's doing that, if I transfer this grip and come here, now he's passed. So that takes a little bit of timing on my part but you want to prepare for a very good opponent. We come here, he goes to sit up, and I transfer. How am I, oops, sorry. How am I doing that? I go here, palm towards his wrist, I grab, I pin, and now I can rip and pass. Very simple, very easy, very strong. So, this is why it's important to not rely exclusively on that shin check. So what do we do now if we try that sleeve push and they catch our wrist? As we're going and they catch our wrist here, we've got to Granby back into them here. So it takes a lot of timing to get that, but it's worth working. So one more time, Stefan catches me, I go sleeve push, he grabs the wrist. I'm gonna either dive back or, let's go back. We're gonna do this slow so you can see exactly the transitions. He starts going, I push, he grabs that sleeve here. I, if I don't react, I'm gonna be put back. So I'm gonna Granby and bring my hips back into him. And this Granby is, is in general a very useful tool. One drill that I'll do with my uh, beginner to mid-level students is, if I'm on my side and the person passes behind me, I Granby and now I'm back inside my guard. They go to the other side, I Granby and now I'm back inside my guard. So a really useful guard retention tool. And in particular, when they start trapping that wrist, it's important that we feel stuck, we're getting put back here, we lift our hips, and we recenter with them. Now, what's another thing they can do to shut us down when they feel us grandy? Remember, they have a grip on our pants. So if we're grabbing their sleeve, so, if they go for the shuck and we try to sleeve push, they go for our wrist and we Granby, what can they do to shut us down? I start coming for the shuck. Stefan sits up and I switch to this grip. Stefan goes to Granby. Now, if I pull this leg this way, Stefan wants his hips to go that way. If I keep this leg, he won't be able to finish his Granby. Try to finish your Granby. <laughs> he gets stuck in a leg drag. So, one more time. It's important, so we're going pretty micro on this, but because I know there are some high-level people watching this, or I hope there are some high-level people watching this, we want to, or people who aspire to be high-level, we want to understand these transitions, both as the passer and as the person on bottom. So as I go to shuck here, Stefan sits up and does his elbow push. I come here and I start grabbing his wrist to pin him down. He decides to grab me and I pull this in. We have to be able to stop this pull. So what do we do? So a lot of transitions here, but he goes for the shuck. I go to sit up, he switches to my wrist. I feel this, I go to Granby, and he pulls that in. Where are we? We're in a leg drag. What do we say the counter to the leg drag was? Reloop. And now we're back in our guard. So one more time. We're here, Stefan goes to shuck, I go to sit up, I go to Granby, he holds me, I reloop, and then I recenter. One more time, he goes to shuck, I sit up, he goes for my wrist, I Granby, he holds, I reloop, and then we're back in control. So again, this is, this is maybe a bit involved, but we saw throughout this whole series, we saw how many times 
if the partner on top did a good job of breaking our grips, how many times we were stuck with just one grip. We talked about how dangerous a situation that, that was and that we needed an answer and that we would talk about it here. So rather than just show one answer sitting up and, and pushing that sleeve, I wanted to really look at the, the kind of pathway that would happen. This is, this is something, you know, if you're brand new white belt, uh, or someone who's brand new to spider guard, that sleeve push is probably all you need to start. But then, as you start mastering that, and your training partners start getting ready for dealing with that, they're gonna be looking for other options, or if you teach it to them, you're gonna to wanna to know how to shut down. So, that wrist grab, very important. And then how do we shut down the wrist grab? We have to grab it. And, and again, this is the kind of the progression of Jiu Jitsu. And then of course, there are leg drag, reloop counters, that we, you know, we'll have to say for another time, but that, that whole idea of, uh, some people call it action reaction, move, counter move, and, and being, for me that's a, that's a real understanding of Jiu Jitsu, where you know not only what you should be doing, your game plan, but your game plan is so deep that you're ready for anything your partner can do. That for me is really elegant Jiu Jitsu. That's the Jiu Jitsu I aspire to have, and, and that, uh, you know, from what, Little I know, I'm, I'm happy and, and really grateful for the opportunity to share. So I'm really uh, thankful both to Stefan and to all the people who've helped me along my journey and uh, for sure all my students and especially uh, the people who helped me get ready, you know, either consciously or otherwise for this. Um, definitely my instructor, Sean Williams, uh, my friend John Thomas, who really kind of exploded my understanding of Spider Guard and uh, my brown belt uh, among all, many of my students, but definitely my, my brown belt, Ostap Manistirski, really kind of kind of ignited a, a fire of, of trying to really analyze the game and, and all of these, this kind of step-by-step -step approach was in many ways inspired by, by the approach he takes and a lot of the techniques came from all those people and from many of my students. A lot of my purple belts uh, have, have generated ideas for me um, and helped me get ready for putting this together. So. Again, Stefan, thank you. Thank you for you guys, uh, to you guys for watching. And um, yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity. Well, on behalf of the viewers and myself, thank you so much for uh, sharing this large and in-depth portion of your game. It was really cool. And I thought that ending it on that level where there's move, counter move, counter, counter move, counter, counter, counter move, and on ad infinitum is a good it's a good way to illustrate, a good way to wrap up the, the high level jiu-jitsu that we're talking about mm -hmm. because ultimately that's available in every position mm -hmm. and you, the people watching this and myself have just gotten many of the pieces of the puzzle that we need to put together to have an effective guard. So on behalf of everyone, thank you again Elliot. Awesome. Thank you.